Welcome everybody to Volatility Trading Strategies. So I'm experimenting with a little bit different format here today, but it did occur to me that many of you who do follow me on the YouTube channel, you might not actually be aware that I put out several articles as well, and I've got those all up on the website. So of course check those out if you've got some time. But because you do follow me for video format, I thought what I could do is maybe go back through some of those older articles, pick out some of the more interesting ones, update all the charts, and go ahead and make it into a video format for you so you can get that information as well. So I'm going to start this off today by talking about what is the average VIX value. Because there's a lot of confusion around this subject. Some people say it's 20, some people say it's closer to 15. There's a lot of different ways to quantify what average actually means. So that's the first question we're going to discuss today. So give the video a like for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let me dive into that article for you. Okay, so this is the website, volatilitytradingstrategies.com. And you can go on here, you can learn a little bit more about me. Every one of our individual strategies has its own web page. So you can see its performance and how it does through various market cycles. There's a Q&A section. Of course, a subscribe tab. If you are interested, there's a free two-week trial. You can see my daily emails, no obligation. You can check out our trades for a couple of weeks. There's a volatility dashboard. People might be interested in this. I do actually share quite a bit of information about the actual metrics that I use for my trading. And each one of these has its own article you can learn about as well. These aren't just specific to VTS. These are things that everybody can use in their own trading to more accurately account for volatility in your trading. But if we do go over to the blog section, you can see I divided it into videos and articles. So for videos, there's 132 of them, and that's the same number that you see on the YouTube channel. But for articles, we've got 608 of them. This is the one that I just did today. So like I said, I could go through a bunch of these and I could update all the information and actually present them for you in a way that you can get the video format. But there's some good stuff that I was talking about here. So I think I might do a few of these. But let's go ahead and go into this article. And it is what we are talking about. What is the average VIX? And I started off by showing that this is the VIX index for the one year. And we can see it is attempting to dip back below 20 for the first time since before all this COVID mess started. You can see things got crazy high in March and April. The VIX reached an intraday high of 85.47. And it reached a closing value of 82.69 on March 16th, which is a higher closing value than at any time in the VIX's history going back to 1990. Even higher than any level in the financial crisis. But it has started to make a couple of attempts to dip back down lower. So what we start to see a lot of people talking about is that the VIX is getting back to more normal average levels. You know, people will always say, well, isn't the average VIX actually about 20? And so if we do dip below 20, that just means that it's an average level. And that is true. You can see in this chart here, what I've done is I've divided the VIX values into calendar years going back to 1990. And this is just the average for that year, the mean VIX index value for just that calendar year. So 2020, for example, we've got 29.68 which is the third highest on record. But the long-term average, you can see that line there, is at 1946. So when we're talking about the VIX dipping back below 20, that's nothing special because technically the average VIX is around 20. It's 1946. But that's what I want to talk about, that there are different ways of looking at what the true average really is. And the first one we're going to look at is called the median. So the median is just the middle number in a set of numbers. So we've got an example here, 33469, just a random basic example. The middle number, of course, is 4. So the median of this set of five values is 4. Now with respect to the VIX index, for this chart, what I've done is I've ranked all the values going back to 1990 from the lowest to the highest. This distribution is all the values of the last 30 years. From a low of 914 on November 3rd, 2017, which was the lowest volatility year on record, to a high, of course, this year at 82.69, March 16th. Now the absolute middle number, the median, is 1744. That means that exactly 50% of all values of the past have been below 1744, and exactly 50% of all values have been above 1744. That is the middle number in this distribution. But you can see the reason that the straight up average, the mean, is so much higher is because right in the top section, we do get some tail numbers there that are pretty high. 
And these values are what's bringing up the long-term average of the VIX to the 1946 level, when in actual fact the middle number is 1744. So for me personally, I think it's more meaningful to know that half the numbers are down here and half of them are over here, rather than to just take up the average, which does include some pretty insanely high values. But there is a third way that we can look at this, and that's called the mode. The definition of the mode, very simply, is just the value that occurs most frequently in a data set. So again, if we go up to our example here, really quick example, 33469, the most common number in that set of five is three. The mode is three. Now with respect to the VIX index, for this chart, again, this is all values to 1990, and I've just grouped them in one handle ranges. So nine to 10, 10 to 11, et cetera, all the way up. On the high side, don't let this value fool you. I basically grouped them in fives because there are far fewer values above 30 here, but it would look like a straight distribution dipping back down closer to zero, and then of course above 82, there's no values. But the mode, the most commonly occurring value, is 1242. You can see it here, the most common number right there is that bar, between 12 and 13. Second most common between 13 and 14, and then the 14s and the 11s. So the VIX does spend an awful lot of time in this lower range. And when you factor these two things together, the mode of 1242 and the median of 1744, we notice that what the average VIX is, it does actually try to find levels that are significantly lower than the mean. Now, what does this mean with respect to trading? I'll just read this out here. First, if you're the type of trader that's always expecting the VIX to mean revert to 20, you've likely burned through significant capital over the years hedging and trying to time volatility spikes. But the other one, on the other hand, Traders who expect the VIX and volatility markets in general to mode revert back closer to the 12s and 13s have a higher probability of riding equity trends higher and finding clever ways of shorting volatility lower. And this is very true. If you're the type of trader that understands that volatility is seeking out lower levels, it means that you can hang on to the trend a little bit longer. You can let those equity positions go a little longer, even if volatility does dip below what is considered the technical long-term average. And you can look for those opportunities to short volatility well past when the VIX is at 20, and you can actually still be comfortable shorting volatility all the way down to the lower levels that it does typically try to find. It's very important as a trader to know the levels you're looking for ahead of time so that when you reach those levels, you're not making emotional decisions, and in this case, turning around and burning a bunch of capital trying to short the market or trying to go long volatility, when again, those trends do last a little bit longer than the long-term average mean would have us believe. So there you go, that's how I would answer the question. If somebody said, what is the average VIX value? I think that somewhere between that median of 1744 and the mode of 1242, anywhere in that range, that's probably a more reasonable assessment of what average really is. So if you asked, probably I would say 14, something in there, 13, 14, that's the average VIX value. And that is important because as we've seen, technically it's 1946. So if the VIX did reach 13 and you had the mindset that, wow, we are way below the long-term average, that might actually cause you to make some mistakes. That might cause you to do the unthinkable, which is actually trying to time those volatility spikes and buy the UVXY or buy the VXX. Just because the VIX is 13 or 14 does not mean that it's gonna mean revert all the way back up to 20 and you're gonna make a bunch of money buying UVXY or buying VIX calls. That's not exactly how it works. So as a trader, it is important to look at the data and to interpret it correctly. So while it is technically true that the VIX is a mean reverting index, and it is, it is the textbook definition of mean reversion, it's not actually accurate when we take into account that there's better ways to look at it. The VIX index is mean reverting, median reverting, and mode reverting. It is all three, but I would say it's more accurate to say mode reverting or median reverting, somewhere down 13 to 14. So thank you very much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and make sure you leave in the comment section below whether you wanna see more of these types of videos from me. This sort of off the cuff, looking at some of my old articles and giving you that information in video format. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.